Lucky is on the men's side, the number one seed. Maris is the number one seed for the women's side out of San Francisco. And I told you about the New Zealand race. It was turned into a 70.3. Did that change your mindset on how, because you had St. George on the schedule, correct? I did, Did yeah. that change your training or mindset? All of a sudden you did a 70.3. You didn't have an Ironman distance under your belt. Is it a little different here than you thought it would be? You know what, I just consider myself um, only half as toasted, you know? So I, I, you know, I kept the plan the same. I did New Zealand and then Oceanside, and knowing that this was the one I was uh, even more so looking forward to, even though New Zealand was quite a journey and I enjoyed the experience. But um, training kind of stayed the same, and I'm coming in here just as excited as if I would have done the full in New Zealand. Do you feel it's an advantage that you've done this race before, this course before? Absolutely. I mean, um, having done it both both times it was offered and like like we all have this amazing opportunity the last year it's offered to be a full Ironman uh, to make some history here. So um, I, I would keep coming back year after year after year to do this course. I've done, this will be my 44th Ironman and it's, it's the hardest and the most scenic if you take time to look. Usually we're in the well and not looking around as much but it's the most beautiful course out there and the most challenging by far. You know, by itself, that deserves a round of applause, the 44th Iron Man for that. Huh? Catch me. Yeah, no, I, I have redemption though on this quote. I mean, I, I've towed the line 46 times and I've uh, oh, DNF twice. So um, when I passed out at mile 22 last year of the run on this course, I uh, tend to give that 22 now the bird and the. Uh, <laughs> And, and I will give it a glare t on Saturday and, and just keep going that last four miles and no stretchers for me this year. Just don't kick down the mile marker or something. That's, <laughs> that's right. right. So nobody Grr, so yeah. nobody yeah. knows where 22 is when they're coming That's by. right, that's right. <laughs> um, well, first of all, it's great that it's something is going to stay in St. George, so having a half Ironman early season. Um, that said, I, I don't think the race was given a full chance to really shine as much as it could. I mean, this is only year three, and people tend to think they get overwhelmed by the, the thought that it is a tough course, but this is Ironman, you know, this is tough, and not every course is going to be flat and fast, and it's no different than a Canada in my book, or, um, let's see, I, I mean, Louisville I think is hot just because of the heat there, so it's no different than any other Ironman, and it's in this beautiful venue, easy to get to, and you can't beat it, so it's a, it's a really bummer in my book that it's not a full, but I'm still grateful that we'll have a race here in the early season half Ironman. I just wanted to say, I mean, this, this isn't a PR course. Um, this, I know Heather holds the record at 9.30 for the women, which is an incredible record for this course, uh, incredible time for this course. Um, so even to get 9.29 and 38 seconds and get it by 30 would be a, a huge victory, even though for me that's 30 minutes slower than I've ever done. And so I, I don't think time should be even a factor for, for anyone out here. You should just go the course and how you're, how you're doing within it. and. Um, your peers, everyone's experiencing the same course and the same weather conditions, so it'll be good, no less. Our first woman out of the water, Miss Mikey Crosby from Germany, Marilyn Kessler from San Francisco. I know. I know. Meredith, Meredith, Meredith. I was telling you.
everybody about the second places and third places you had, your win in Canada, and then obviously New Zealand, and now St. George. But this has to be a sweet, sweet victory for you. First of all, I might sound like I've had 10 tequila shots, so bear with me. Um, maybe you have. I, I should have. Maybe water was spiked. Um, that was a day out there. Let me tell you, the swim, I was pretty sure I was going to end up on an episode of Lost. And the bike, I've never, I mean, that's an hour slower. Hour? Oh, more than an hour slower than, than we usually ride. Everyone had to deal with it, but I mean, tough conditions out there. The run, which is never the easiest part, was the easiest part today. So I can't thank all the fans and all the volunteers. I mean, this has been an amazing, amazing event. There was no way that record was being broken today. I knew that about 30 miles in on the bike. But man, she can go. But it was a great day. Thank you for having me very much. Well, Mary, one more quick question out there on the course. You know, you did have a bit of a commanding lead. Did you just try to get into a pace and go, okay, I'm just going to enjoy this now? Oh, God, no. I was, like, very, very uncomfortable. Comfortable being uncomfortable. And, uh, I mean, I, there was hard to enjoy it because at certain points. Um, I had a record high at 52 miles per hour, and I also had a record low. I think I was going six at one time. <laughs> six is something. Um, so I just was trying to keep calm and, and controlled the whole day. The, the theme of the day was to stay controlled because it's easy to blow up on this course. Well, Meredith, you are an Ironman champion here in St. George. One more time, everybody, for Meredith Kessler. All of you who took part in yesterday. Um, I think the majority of us probably wished it was a half Ironman, so lucky we get to experience that next year. Uh, have you ever come to work one day and a coworker says, how was that swim, bike, run thing that you did yesterday? They don't, might not fully understand what you do, but know you're really active. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it was great, it was great. And you walk away going to get your coffee thinking, man, you have no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> yesterday was one of those days that truly defines why those sweet, sweet coworkers may not fully capture what an Iron Man is until you witness it or until you're in it. In between singing Katy Perry's latest and questioning my sanity out there yesterday, the way I tried to stay controlled as I try to do in life when things get nutty is sort of to be like a duck, like smooth, smooth, smooth on the outside and might be pedaling frantically underneath. I can tell you with 100% certainty I was more like a flailing duck in the water yesterday. Um, the key was staying calm and, and not getting too frantic out there. Same goes on the bike. We really needed to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Pretty much 80 miles of that 112. Um, I'm sure you all realized it was going to be a long day when you hit pockets of five to six miles per hour and almost got blown off your bike, either or. The marathon, typically the hardest part of the day, seemed like a breeze after tackling such a hard bike swim combo. The three loop run course was really awesome. It was great to see the camaraderie out there after a tough day. So much tenacity, focus, mental fortitude, and resilience went into yesterday's race, which outshined perhaps how in shape we all were coming into the race. I can tell you that you could have been the fittest person out there yesterday, but if your mind wasn't set up for success and prepared, it would have been nearly impossible, understandably, to finish. With that said, I want to congratulate all the people who did toe the line. Yesterday, if you are a 2012 Ironman St. George finisher, I salute you. But I also, and I speak from experience having DNF last year this race at mile 22 of the run, that you'll have your day someday and it'll be even better and even sweeter. I have some thank yous. I want to thank all the ladies on the, on the podium here. Jesse in second, Yuli in third, Jillian who definitely passed me on the run. I, I realized I was a loop ahead, but she passed me like I was standing still. And Aaron, <laughs> congratulations, ladies. Um, I want to thank 
Jack and his Iron Man team for executing such a successful race as ever. I can tell you that the 70.3 here next year will drive a lot of business and a lot of volume in pros and amateurs. It'll be the hardest race on the circuit and it'll, it'll be great because we only have to do one loop. <laughs> I'd like to thank the volunteers. Obviously, we could not do this sport without you. And you're also positive and, and cheery out there. Thank you. Um, I obviously want to thank the city of St. George. I love it here. I can see why Trevor and Heather Wortel pack it, park it, literally, <laughs> here in St. George. And they have wonderful ambassadors and Heather and Trevor to represent their city and the Ironman community. Thank you for having us, St. George. I want to thank my sponsors, obviously, particularly Reynolds Wheels, who was here today and yesterday to support all of the Reynolds Wheels people out there, and also Saucony, who is uh, just the best sponsor a good girl could have. So thank you, Jess, for being here. To Mike Riley, I think he really, this man earns his bacon. Uh, his enthusiasm and positivity shine. Twinkle toes over there even dances on the on the finish line for everybody, and it's pretty awesome every year. Every Ironman, I think. I have to thank my family and my husband Aaron because I obviously wouldn't be up here today without their support. And um, to all my athletes that I coach who raced, I, I commend you. They all finished and they did excellent. And I'd like to thank my Purple Patch crew who's here, who I train with day in and day out, who inspired me as always on the course and every day when we train. Um, lastly, I'm really delighted to be a part of this victory with fellow American Ben Hoffman. Um, who had an exceptional performance today. Uh, first class guy for a first class win. Having had the pleasure of winning Canada and New Zealand, I'm finally excited to take home a USA victory. So I share it with all of you. Thank you.